Hi, today I want to tell you how I visualize the summary resources and use of funds in my project finance models. Before we get into today's topic, for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Hedie. I made financial modeling my profession as well as my passion. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, please consider following me on YouTube. One of the most important statements in a project finance model is the sources and uses of fund statement. It is composed of two sections. Uses of fund statement shows the total cost of a project with an explicit and meaningful breakdown of cost. It identifies the total financing required for a project. Sources of fund statement, on the other hand, lists the financing facilities that have been identified as available to meet the cost. The summary sources and use of funds table appears in most documents and should also be included in the summary sheet or dashboard within the financial model. It is also useful to include a chart to visualize the main items in the total project and the financing plan. When I started building models for project finance transaction, I used to use the pie chart to summarize the sources and use of funds statement. However, when you have relatively detailed breakdown of cost, then the pie chart will not be a good option because the data will be difficult to read. Nowadays, I mainly use the bar chart, which is a better alternative in my opinion, and you can order it in the ascending or descending order. And that's what I want to show you today in this video. Okay, let's get started. So this is a financial model. I have a summary resources and use of funds in my dashboard. I already have a pie chart, which basically shows the subcategories as you can see the EPC development costs and other costs and the finance total financing costs. However, what I want to do in the project documents, I want to list the de these details as well. What I need to do is I usually have a sheet within my model, which I call data for graph. And I basically all the data that I need and it can become a little bit ugly as well, because sometimes you use the NA for basically making your charts dynamic. So you don't want maybe to have these uh, um, calculations uh, within your um, model in the dashboard or in the other calculation sheet. So I separate them and I put them all in a sheet that I call data for charts or data for graph. Okay, so step one is to list all the items and their values in two separate columns. And in step two, we're going to rank them. So I'm going to skip some of the steps that I mentioned in my blog post, but we're going to come back to them after. I'm just going to show you, you know, how I do it and then the problems that you face if you skip these two steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's rank these items. So I'm just going to use the function in Excel, which is called rank. Okay, so it says rank this. Okay, I should have gone to the next one, but it's okay. Rank this item within this list. And then I'm going to select the list. Okay, of course, I'm going to fix them because I want to then drag the formula down. Okay, so I'm going to copy it down. And that's going to give me basically a ranking for these um, for these uh, items. Okay. Next step is to create a counter in ascending or descending order. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to choose first the maximum function. So maximum of this is going to be 14. And then I'm going to say, just give me for the next one, the maximum of zero, because I don't want it to go down to zero and this minus one. Okay, perfect. So now I can copy the formula down and that's going to be my order. Okay. Next step is to get the align items that correspond to our ranking. So let's start here. We're going to get the, um, the item. Okay. The item this time. So I'm looking for pre prior previously, I had to use the index and match function. Now we have the X lookup, which does the job of index and match. So we're going to use the X lookup and we're going to tell Excel to look for number 14. Of course, I'm going to fix the column because later I want to just copy it across in this ranking. 
and I want um, Excel to pick up the labels, okay? And then I'm gonna fix just the rows, okay? Perfect, so now that I have it, I can copy it down and it's gonna give me the labels that corresponds to this ranking. Next to it, I'm just gonna copy it across. I'm gonna put the, um, the values, okay? So with these two steps, I should be fine. I should be able to now have my charts and then I'm gonna show you what are the problems with this chart and we're gonna try to fix them. Okay, so now first let's just uh, see how the chart looks like. Alt F1 to draw it and then we're gonna of course change it, right? So we don't like this one. What we are looking for in terms of the chart type is this one, okay? Basically, this one is the one that we are looking for. So look at this one. Uh, you, you see, I mean, um, I don't know about you, but I don't like it that much. It doesn't look that good. So we will try to fix it one by one. The first thing that I noticed here is that these two values, you see fence and services, they are exactly the same values. Look, they are exactly identical. So when I look and when I rank them and when I use um, the rank function under Excel, so it's gonna pick up only one, which is the first one. As you can see, only fence comes up here. There is a little bit difference. Contingency also seems to be the same, but there is a little difference. So as you can see, it skipped the services fee, which I need to also include in my breakdown and in my chart. So how to fix it is to cheat a little bit. And that's the step one and two that I skipped and I'm gonna mention here. Okay, to do the adjustment, we need to create a flag that can detect the identical uh, figures in our list. So let's create that flag. Uh, for that flag, I'm using, I'm borrowing a formula from Extend Office, which I put the link in the blog post as well. So uh, what you need to do is to basically, it's a fairly, I mean, it's a very simple and neat formula. It is just saying that count, it's using the count if function to detect the identical values, okay? So I'm gonna drag it down as, and as you can see, it can detect that this one is exactly identical to that one. And if, for example, just for the sake of demonstration, if I put the exact one, it's gonna also detect that one. So you see, so now that I have, I know exactly where are my identical figures, I'm gonna do a small adjustment, meaning that I'm gonna say that um, add this plus this times a very small number, okay? This is a very small number. It's not gonna make any difference in our visual. Um, this is like, let me show you in my input sheet. I have it, it's 0 0.00001. So as you can see, it's not gonna make much difference. So I'm gonna put this plus this flag times my very small number, or you can just type it down as well if you wish, okay? So as you can see here, that one is exactly identical to this one, but uh, let's copy it down and you will see that, um, let's also change the formatting of this one and you will see that actually they are basically identical. There will be a very, very small minor difference between this and this. So it's gonna enable the rank function to pick it up. So now instead of uh, this values, I'm gonna ask the uh, rank to pick them up from the adjusted values, okay? Perfect, so now as you can see here, with that correction, I have the services also included in my chart, okay? So I'm gonna add the data labels and all that. So I am still not very happy with this one. And this is because visually, so let's also um, get the units in the chart, okay? And so I wanna get rid of these, these N values and all the zeros and all that. For that, what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the filter, okay? I think that's a good solution. You tell me if you have a better option, but I think filtering is not a bad idea in this case, and it's gonna help us, 
help us to basically get rid of all the NAs and zeros and all that. So you see, I already, I filtered, okay. And I'm gonna come and say, forget the, just omit the zero ones, omit the blanks and omit the NAs, okay. So now that looks much better, okay. Let's just maybe give a little distance, which is gonna look better, perfect, okay. So now I have this chart, I think that it's good and I can basically copy it to my dashboard as well and put it next to, if you want to keep the pie chart and put the, um, uh, put the, sorry, so you can see I have it here. So you can maybe keep the pie chart if you want to or delete it, but I prefer this one. So now let's see what's gonna happen if, for example, some of these um, spare items that I have here, look, these are the spare items, which I am not using. Let's just add some values for them. Let me go to my input sheet and um, in my CapEx items, let me find them, okay. So that's the chart. So let's add some stuff. For example, I have insurance and O&M, which are currently zero, but maybe I want to add a value for these line items. Okay. So 0 0.02 as well for this one. And as you can see, the chart is dynamic and is going to be updated automatically once you add other line items to your chart and it looks also good. It omits all the zeros and it's also ranked them. It depends on you in ascending or descending order. So I'm going to put the blog post as well. So you can also see the details of the same steps. And there's going to be also a, an Excel template, which basically this one, it's just going to be an extract from this. This is a complete project finance model. I'm going to just extract this part and, and uh, provide it to you on my Eloquence channel. And um, I think that's it for me now. And uh, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to contact me. I see you hopefully in my next video. Thank you. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.